Welcome back. And the next session is uh, vaccination certificates, an introduction to the work of the eHealth network. And it's my pleasure to introduce Ron Rosenthal, who's the Director of Information Policy and CIO of the Ministry of Health, Welfare and Sport at the Netherlands. And he is the co-chair of the eHealth network. Uh, over to you, Ron. Well, thank you, Bledem. Um, I'm honored to be here, be it online again. I would love to see all of you in person. Um, because I distinctly remember a crowded conference room in Malta uh, at the Malta eHealth Week in 2017, four years ago, where our Estonian friend Ein and Brian O'Connor pitched the creation of the Digital Health Society. And we were at that time very happy to be the founding members and it's good to see the DHS alive and thriving today. Good to see you all, albeit in an online forum. And today I'm here, and you just said that, Bladen, uh, both as the Director for Health Information Policy at the Dutch Ministry of Health, but also as the Member State Co-Chair of the European EOS Network. And let me start by saying that in this global pandemic, we have shown together that only by working together as Member States, we were able to solve some pressing interoperability issues. Uh, first, we did that in European contact tracing and now in the digital COVID certificate. And the success of those solutions is firmly rooted in the ability of the member states to work as a block in the EOS network. And for those of you who are not familiar with that EOS network, this is the body where all the European member states work together to advance cross-border interoperability for health data. The eHealth Network is a voluntary collaboration of the national authorities on digital health. Healthcare is a national competence, and the network aims to align and coordinate our common efforts. The network is mandated by Article 14 of the European Patient Directive from 2011, and to advance the interoperability of health data by creating guidelines for the cross-border exchange of patient data and effective methods for enabling the use of medical information for public health and research. To achieve that, the eHealth Network members have created the My Health at EU network. And that is a network of national contact points through which patient data can flow from one member state to the other in a safe, secure and trusted way. And this work on creating a pan-European infrastructure has been the main focus of the eHealth Network. And then the pandemic happened. Initially, initially, every member state focused on managing the crisis in their own country. But soon the need for European collaboration became evident. Because of the freedom of movement in Europe, the need for cross-border interoperability grew too. And with the support of the Commission, the EF network created interoperability guidelines and European services for cross-border contact tracing and DCCs, the Digital COVID Certificates. And that sounds relatively simple but it isn't and it wasn't. It meant that every member state made the necessary expertise available to do its important work. Instead of meeting twice a year, the network mandated national experts to meet every week and sometimes every day. And because of the tremendous pressure from society and politics, tough decisions had to be made in only a few days instead of months. And this required leadership, boldness, and sometimes blunt directness and most importantly, it required trust. Trust that we are in this together and that together we are making everyone stronger. And it worked. Within weeks, we published the interoperability guidelines for contact tracing apps and launched the gateway service that connects them. In addition to that interoperability guidelines, a trust framework was created to bring in additional safeguards respecting citizens' privacy and preventing misuse. We've built the EU DCC Gateway, a European service that enables the cross-border interoperability and exchange of COVID certificates. There's one big difference with the work done on contact tracing, and it is that the DCC guidelines are part of the European regulation that mandates its use. This time, the eHealth network mandate is not voluntary. As a result, the DCC is the only COVID vaccine passport that is used for cross-border travel at a global scale. 45 countries have been connected to the gateway. The 27 of the EU, three EEA countries, 15 third countries, 
and with more 30 more countries worldwide in the pipeline. Over 628 million di digital certificates have been issued for vaccination, PCR tests, and rapid antigen tests and, and proof of recovery. The e -Health network coordinates these efforts with the ECDC, the WHO, and ICAO, the International Civil Airlines Organization. And this work shows that where there is a will, there is a way to achieve real-world, meaningful interoperability for health data. And the journey of the e -Health network illustrates the growing relevance of international collaboration and the value of having the network as the platform and the available platform to do this all together. So, as I said, international collaboration on interoperability is necessary, but it's hard, hard work, and it's not a norm. And we can build upon three lessons learned from the pandemic to further collaboration on the interoperability. The, the first lesson, digital health is not a goal in itself. It must be undeniably clear that it's relevant to citizens, patients, care professionals. The same goes for interoperability, unity of language or unity of technology. In the same line, international collaboration should never be a goal in itself, but be an agile instrument. The ability to quickly add expert resources to address very specific issues, as well as the mandate to quickly make informed decisions, has been critical to the success of both the contact tracing interoperability and the DCC certificate guidelines. International collaboration is hard work. We cannot solve this within the borders of our individual countries or individual silos. Any collaboration needs to have clear and visible national relevance. Second lesson is that international collaboration, and especially in the field where technology, data, health, healthcare and public and civil values meet, needs to inform the whole ecosystem. Government authorities should build the capacity to have citizens, professionals, innovators, industry and outsiders participate, participate in the European collaboration. Thirdly, we should, address, we should address these difficult questions with priority. Only by tackling the complex issue that hinder global interoperability can we make true progress. The time for picking the low-hanging fruit is now officially over. Now is the time to fix the market failure by further develop cooperation on the digital health. Governments need to step up and use their authority to break through the market failure and enforce standards-based digital health exchange of data, but only as part of an integrated ecosystem approach. This also means we need you guys too. So remember, we are all working towards the same goal. With these lessons, I hope to give you a sense of the direction European collaboration should take in the near future. Thank you. Ron, fantastic. A, a tour de force across the whole landscape of, of digital health. I hope if you don't mind, we can address some questions quickly. So I, I guess for many of the people listening, uh, they may not be that familiar with the work of the eHealth Group. Uh, and you clearly articulated how this is uh, member states, regions uh, working together. Do you, do you foresee what the next step might be uh, for the eHealth Network in terms of building on the fantastic work that's been done during the pandemic? What might you be doing next? Have you got any plans? Well, we were working on, we are working on, on major issues. Um, and the difference with the pandemic period is that the, the time frame within, we, the, the, what we are working within was years and not weeks. And what I hope is that this agile way of working together based on trust can be, um, um, that, that it can help to do the, the work that we normally do to move faster and in a more agile way, step by step, instead of taking years to come to one or two decisions. Right. And picking up one of the last points that you made, which was about uh, you need to work with other groups. So professionals, you know, healthcare professionals, um, industry. How, how do you foresee those organizations getting involved with the eHealth network? Now, first of all, I'm very proud on, uh, of the Digital Health Society. Uh, it brings together all the all the organizations working on guidelines, standards, etc., in on interoperability in healthcare. Um, and what we need is that these coalitions of doing and coalitions of willing work together with, for example, the health network. 
that where the network says it is, for example, working on the cross-border exchange of images, that groups outside um, come to one or two standards and say, well, if you do that, there is a global focus on this and this standard to be able to do that cross-border exchange of, for example, images. So we need to work together so that all, all parties involved um, um, for, um, decide and, and are able to implement the same set of standards to come to real exchange. Okay, so I'm going to read one of the questions from uh, what the audience. They, they says, there are still interoperability issues with the COVID certificate recognition when it comes to somebody having been vaccinated outside the EU, even with EU recognized vaccine, for example, J&J &J in the US. It is still has to be converted in EU recognized certificate. And in some EU countries, it's very difficult to do. Can the procedure be simplified and harmonized? Um, th that's a very good question. Um, equivalence means that, that the information in one certificate can be transformed to the information that's required or expected by a reader of the European DCC. Um, and that's hard work. That, that's, that's the work I meant when I, say we need, when I said we need to work together on harmonizing standards. So that if a certificate outside of the EU um, um, has in it a certain type of vaccine, that there is a transformation um, uh, possible between that uh, terminology and a term terminology um, used in the European DCC, which is, ex uh, that is the hard work I mentioned we need to do together. Right, got it. I think um, I think we've got a, a, about a minute uh, left, and I I think it would be very interesting if organisations like the DHS and and others are able to bring to you either challenges that they're encountering in practice or uh, offers to help in certain way, and see if that they can we can together collaborate and progress. So I. I take that as a, a takeaway for everybody who's listening, that you're, if you like, open for business, open for collaboration. Uh, and uh, on behalf of everybody, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you and the eHealth Network for what is critically important work in the last 12 months and longer. And, and I'm sure that on top of all the national uh, pressures around looking after patients in, during the pandemic, uh, this work on top of that has been a, a fabulous success. And uh, so I congratulate you and thank you very much for uh, for attending today. And, and I look forward to speaking, you, speaking to you again in the future. So Ron, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome, man. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.